Yes, I'm Sink. And I'm Echo. And we're back once again playing Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. In the last episode, we finished up Recipe for Turnabout. We brought Mitfirio Tigre to justice for murdering El Glenn Elg. And in this episode, we're going to be starting Turnabout Beginnings. Beginnings. Let's get going. Turn up all beginning. The girl. The girl. Let her go. Is, is this a movie? It's a movie. Shut up. C come closer and I'll, I'll kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Bang. Phoenix? I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive Data. <laughs> Name Terry? Terry Falls. Kidnapping, murder. Sentence, death penalty. <laughs> After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured at on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before Mia and I ever met. Is this the case she lost? Because she mentioned she lost the case. Six years earlier. Mia, Mia Faye, first trial. Oh, Mia! Oh, I don't get to investigate this Mia. This is bullshit. <laughs> uh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, good, good morning. Don't be just jumping, Mia. I didn't do nothing. I swear. I didn't kill anybody. Terry Falls. Falls. My first client. Sentenced to death five years ago. And now, a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Er, uh, um, so why do you escape anyway? <sighs> She's so bad at this in the beginning. Uh, uh, oh, uh. oh, no, no, e I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Uh, sorry, I told a lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I'd never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, 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 uh. Ig, I'm really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon and then when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman who was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believed that Terry Falls did it. Um, after he escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her! She was alive when I left! She was alive! It, 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 it's true! I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Ha! Huh. Oh! What? You're not going to figure out the truth just by staring at that guy. There, there's no, there's no mosquito it. It's Godot. Y you're? Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. I like how he changed the color of his, um, dress shirt to green now. Uh, where's Mr. Grossberg? Huh. The old man's probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Almondo. 
that your real name? Yes. Go dot Diego Armando. I, I did say. So Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Crossbird Law Office, is here for me. Uh, wait, the fine at Crossbird Law Offices? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a defense place? Yes. No, no, you got it all wrong. Today you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Yeah. Imagine, an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Why did you take it? Ha, huh. relax. I just, um, I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. It's worth- I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since the beginning of his law career. A genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, that's not a simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. Is he wearing a gold necklace? It's this Edgeworth! That looks like Edgeworth. Court what? is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I understand the lawyers from both sides are newcomers. Yes, Your Honor. I'm the FA. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So, the, you're two new prosecutors. So you're the new prosecutor. Everyone's been talking about, eh? You, they say you joined the prosecutor's office quite at an early age. At 20, Your Honor. Is Phoenix 26 now? I guess he is. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned uh, mu herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not just someone younger than you. Um, Mia, that's not the correct thing to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Ezra got his reputation from DL... DL... not DL6. The SL9 incident. I think that's the correct one. The one with... Uh, Gant being the true... Or actually, with Joe Dark. He was actually a murderer, but Gant killed the prosecution because... But he wasn't, but that... That, that's what they said in the first game. That that was his first, the first trial where he got like, a, like a lot, most of, like when he started becoming um, famous. This is the first time we see young Edgeworth. This is the first time we see young Edgeworth. But I'm saying Joe Dart. That trial was the one he got like a lot of his, when his reputation really started ta taking off. Like his whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. I was just I tried to figure out like. In terms of whatever what this the is. The timeline, yeah. Now then, the defendant in this court in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped uh, from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. This is just really weird. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing him like this. <laughs> on the day of the defendant's escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death? You got it, kitten. Your weird-ass smirk. <laughs> well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. I guess we couldn't pass a game without seeing Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. There was no decisive evidence? Then how did that- how did the verdict end? Correct. 
But in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. Your hair look, is shorter. Also, now. look look at that young face, young, much younger face of Edgeworth, and that cocky point. <laughs> a witness testimony. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, is the person who confronted this criminal. Hawthorne? Like, what's her name? Delia? Delia! Dahlia. Dahlia! Dahlia was a Hawthorne, too. Mm -hmm. Huh. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene of the scene and later testified against him. She said uh, she witnessed Mr. Falls throwing his young victim into the river. For those who not are aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in there are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned, she wouldn't be exactly the victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Ah, I see. The man who uh, was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago, with only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious the defendant is guilty. Objection is right! Wait a minute! That's not right! At least hear the case before you decide the outcome, Your Honor! Hmm. Watch yourself, Miss Fay. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why, you? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite! Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I can't believe they were each other's first ca court case. Mm hmm At the same time, I guess I can't believe. <laughs> but still, did, did Mia say she wa lost this really badly? I called the, the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Is it Gumshoe? What? You're- you're- what, it, what? It is now beige, and that's not right. Or tan. What do you mean tan. it's now beige? Or it, it was, <laughs> it, oh, was it was beige. It's all, he's always had a beige jacket. It just turned green over the years. Witness, state your name and occupation. <laughs> Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe. I'm homicide detective in charge of this case, sir. I finally got promoted to detective division over a half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. He's so proud. Hey, ma'am, do you have got any idea how much work it takes? Well, what is it? You... You're really gorgeous. <laughs> Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart. It's aching for you. Um... I don't think you'd be saying this. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up in contempt so quick that something or uh, something other than your heart will ache. Uh, oh, okay, I got it. Now, detective, please tell us about the incident. Yes, sir! Right away! The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was st stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The courts would like to hear m more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir! I got you. Look, okay, so, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. Aerial map. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under it is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met here on the top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim to his car. He was recaptured at, at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm. I see. Okay. The, was the victim's blood found on the bridge? 
Died from blood loss between four and five. Let's go ahead and look at the profiles too. Oh, I forget profile of the day. All right, so Terry Retired. Falls is twenty-five. Sentenced to death five years ago. Escaped from custody two days ago. Twenty-three Valerie Hopdorn, police officer and the victim, the key witness in the case against Falls five years ago. She was eighteen. Damn. Yeah. Diego Armando. 27, male, a hotshot lawyer, my senior arrival at the office, a big smug. Miles, Miles Edgeworth, 20, dubbed a genius as, as soon as he started as a prosecutor. Today is his court debut. Oh, Dick okay. Gumshoe. Homicide detective in charge of the initial investigation. Still new to his position. 26. <laughs> The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. There, will, there was no blood on the bridge. Then you have no proof that they were even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we ha have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. I can't believe she, he's like, there's no blood, therefore there's no evidence. Get on with your fucking point. And I'm like, we haven't even started. <laughs> the two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Your eyes creep the hell out of me. They're too yellow. <laughs> I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me, though I were some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for the morning... will drink you for morning tea. Trust me. And get ready. It's still... Since you're, like, our... Us, our helper person. I forgot the right name. Companion. This companion. Are you also limiting yourself to 17 cups of coffee? Summary of the incident. There was no answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to the Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. There was a whole that, and that's when she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body in the into his tr car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the pl defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor! C cross examination coming right up! Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I am not trembling! It's just cold in here! The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, alright? Especially for a beginner. I don't need to worry about me! I mean... I mean the defendant! The witness! Everyone's here! Beginner in here! Ha! Huh. You got me there. Maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you got, kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all night watching. I don't think you should have been staying up all night to watch those videos. Okay. All oh, right. no person phone check asked me. Came to the dusty bridge at the destiny met with that. That's why she was brutally murdered. Stuck her body into trying to get away. Arrested at a police checkpoint we set up in the mountain. Wait, she was phone after he escaped a police wagon in the middle of a fucking mountain? This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? <laughs> the one who called the Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. Well, well, why? The defendant? The defendant called her? With what? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very, was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left on her desk. Victims don't add to court record. 
Hmm. According to this note, it seems that the, the, the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. It falls 4.30 p.m. at that bridge where White Scar for identification talked to Dal Dahlia to her this time the truth must come out. Dahlia killed him. Her. Dahlia killed her because she knew that Dahlia also killed that young girl or something. Or Dahlia was the young girl she fucking fell but she didn't actually die. I don't know. This six years ago, this is about a year before they met. A year, but it, it's exact. Yeah, it's a year before they met because a year later. So after she's this not the girl. She's not the girl. Okay. Uh, white card for identification. Her, tell Dr. Dahlia. Tell her this time the truth must come out. Did we just? Are we just ignoring that part? I guess we are. <laughs> just keep on going. I don't. I believe Dahlia has to do with this. Because of course she does. She's like sketch as fuck. Yeah, who's right idea was to keep that note for me? Ha! Huh. Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask questions if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one who said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said th it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Hmm. A bridge up in the mountains? Why me? But why me there? Because it was a very important place to the defendants, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendants kidnapped a young girl. Oh, that was five years ago. Okay, that must be Dahlia. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. Who was his hostage? And that place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. I, like, I, I, I don't want to keep saying that he killed Dahlia there, killed quote unquote, because I don't know if it's Dahlia or whatever. I don't, why then she would be like around 14-ish. I don't remember her case, I don't remember her age from the actual, from the first case. Right. Of this game, but she's around. She's in college. Five years prior, six years prior, she would be around that that same frame. But why does Dahlia have? The, why must the truth come out with Dahlia? The very place where the Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Ah, returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. That's where she was really murdered. I want to see about this getaway. Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. But he he escaped a wagon when it crashed. Wait, where did it crash? The defendant and the victim both went in bought by, by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, 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 of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been wait waiting at a red light. Hmm, car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. What? Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? <laughs> this, this is the photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, this is the body of Va Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa! That's... That doesn't look too comfortable. <laughs> the victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about women here. You can't tell from this photo, but... The knife was stuck in her back, nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange, uh, strange or noteworthy in, in, in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? Anyways. Okay. No. Don't press present! Okay. Hmm. 
I don't see any strange right now. Let's but this was after after that she was stabbed. Yeah, this was after she was stabbed. There's It's just am I supposed to be like seeing blood or something? On the car? Actually, that would be very stupid to have to blood on the back of the car. Mm -hmm. That would be like honed down like for sure. Yeah. But if she, the way she's set up, if there's like blood dripping onto the, the, the trunk, I wouldn't be able to see it. Right. And there's a knife in her back, which we can't see. Right, but it's there. Because she's got stabbed in the back. Okay. I don't see any strange, do you? Okay, so that was added. Mm -hmm. I feel like I shouldn't have to press this. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What? What you already said, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. He, at the very least, we know he stole a car. It's just as, it's just what he sa always says, your honor. And then he always says, Ugh. I'm sorry, I'm just- I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems that we caught an we he was caught and arrested. Precisely. White scar for identification. There's no scarf. No, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I'm just gonna press just a little bit. That certainly is something, some impressive police work. <laughs> well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Hathals might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them are arranged to meet at 4.30. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped by right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A, a trap? Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flush wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you better get some more information. And if you're gonna get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever-famous contradictions. I hope I can find some of those. I'm gonna press this, just in case. Okay. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. I feel like if I were to murder someone on this mountain, I wouldn't just take the body and stuff it in the trunk. Oh, where would you put it? I'd just throw it in the river. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> throw it in the river. I mean, that makes sense, because, I mean, but they, the police force would know that you were up there. Th they already know I was up there. Now. Yeah, exactly. So, you couldn't leave it just on the... Just but out. if they- I wouldn't leave it out, it goes in the river. <laughs> we found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move, we've got you surrounded! Wait a second, isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how would they find out about the crime so quickly? Certain Harpton must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Huh. If that's what happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call for... She never mentioned the phone call f uh, from Mr. False, but... She left a note on her desk about it. If only I noticed it earlier, she may she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Ba -da, dun, 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 dun. 
I'm sure she did. It's right there on the notes. Look at this. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the truth must come out. We're just I glancing she, over that. I think she, she's... It's, 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 oh. I'm just saying, we're glancing yeah, over this. Also, did she really write the time on that note? Well, yeah, because that, that's the time of the meeting. No! 120, oh. 1 p.m. Oh. That's when she got the phone call, probably. Okay, but sure. Interesting enough, I don't know why she wrote the time, but whatever. There's no scarf. There's no scarf, yeah. Which is the only contradiction I can yeah. think of. Yeah. But I'm not sure what this trap will be. But we shall see. Yet again, are we really skimming over the talk to Dahlia? I'm sure we'll get to it. Come out? I'm sure we'll get to it. Like, we're just like, oh, she met, he, she met, she got a phone call from the victim or from the suspect, and to me at this time, and just like completely skip the last part, do the second half. Witness! <laughs> what is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I I'm sorry! I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is- This is the first time I ever actually actually, actually addressed someone like that. Mm. You should have practice before coming to court. Practice? What? Okay. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. <laughs> Stay there, kitten. Want a little piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Urgh! Come on, Mia! Shake it off! You're a lawyer! Detective! Yes, ma'am! This photo... You said that there was nothing particular about it, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The, the, the note? It's very, it very clearly says, wear a white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, this special request... Oh, I, uh... Mm. I have one very simple question for you, Detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it! Gah! Okay, what trap is it? What trap is this? The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect that she did wear- she did just that. Well, Miss Rudgeworth, what do you have to say about this? Hmm. I see the defense is a little... lacking. The scarf that you are searching for- so desperately for... Is it this one, perchance? That's not white, that's blue! Ah! But where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge, I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Well, what? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. What? It's the safest place I know. Hm. That hot shot sure has flair for the dramatic. It's not exactly white, as the caller requested, but as you can see, it's close enough to what it was intended for. No! Not that's clearly blue. If I looked at that, I'd be like, I would be like, white. Hmm. It looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising. It was drizzling on the day that, that mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth. He was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will now accept this scarf into evidence. Now, if the attorney for the defense is finished embarrassing herself... This is not embar- I'm not- If I, that happened to me, I'd be like, I'm not embarrassed, you fucking hit that like yeah. a mofo. And that, in a more elegant word. Yeah. Found at Dusky Bridge. Now, are you sure it's the victims? There seems to be a third person in this? A Dahlia? I'd like to move on with the testimony. Is that is all right with you, Miss Faye? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclu con conclusively 
and with hard evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we all shall show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Ugh, everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers the kid a genius. A genius, huh? He didn't lose any cases to Phoenix Wright, so yes, Mia did lose this. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo accident uh, accidentally taken by the witness, it shows her wearing the scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day, unfortunately. It was a little hard to see what was going on. Anyway, the criminals shoved the victim down the, from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. I'm surprised it stayed on the bridge and not went down to the river. Hmm, looking at this photo... You really get the sense that the bridge is very high up. Do I? Do I really? If I was- it was shown at more of a- if I could see the bottom of the <laughs> river, I would be like that, yeah. yeah? But not really, not at this angle. Wait a minute. This angle looks like it's like crouching. Like. It does. At like, floor level. Like the bridge level, I guess. Okay. It was about four, uh, 40 minute, 40, minutes. Uh, for, 40 feet to drop from the bridge to Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say it was a well-intended in, in, <laughs> well third party. Intentioned. Intentioned third party. Dahlia? Aha, a potential witness. So, why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well... They said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Dahlia? Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel her to testify. Oh! So it is her! I'm not sure how I feel about that. I... I... Alright, oh, right, well, I was gonna say... Oh, yes. I don't want to keep suspecting Dahlia, but... Dahlia seems to be mentioned in this note right here. Uh-huh. And what truth is this? That she fell off the bridge but she fucking lived and they sentenced him to jail for no fucking reason? Witness photo adds to court record. So, as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and opportunity. By the way, she wasn't facing him in the be behind. Or, like, she wasn't... Her face isn't... She isn't... Like, walking away from him in the photo, but I just wanted to see this. Okay, so. Seems to have taken by the, been taken by the witness, touched about the fifty tails. Okay. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened at that on that bridge. Hmm. Aha, the truth is becoming clear to me now. We didn't really establish anything except that they met. Huh? Yes, it is quite obvious. He is clearly guilty. We only established that they met. There's no establishing of the he Guilt, murdered. Yes. Not again, that's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, huh? Events on Dusty Bridge. Criminal shoved the victim. He is like, yeah, you mentioned. It stabbed her in the back. Accidentally taken by a witness. This camera, because this part picture is clearly focused on them. That is not accidental. Yeah. The victim is wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. So about the witness who took this picture. Who, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. What accidental wildflower is this? <laughs> there are many useful types of flora Unusual. on that mountain. Unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Faye. 
people in the areas say it's because of the spirits that live there. So the spirits? Now that you mentioned it, this photo, this cloudy fog-like thing, it is, is it a ghost? I don't believe it. No, your honor, no, it, I don't think it's a ghost. Mia knows all about that. Now she does. The go I mean, ghosts. It's spirits. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought you were referring to now that she's, okay. She is a ghost now. <laughs> Drizzly, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary. But not as dreary as the mood in this courtroom right now. <laughs> Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... <laughs> the point is that the area was quite damp. Even There was even some fog. I eventually slipped and fell- I, I even slipped- when, uh, I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It was really something. I eventually slipped. Tell me about this backstab. Is that part of the witness testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right onto her stomach. Hmm. I remember that happening once myself. What? What? It was really brutal? Brutal? Canadian colloquialisms, guys. I got me there. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed? Or were you the one getting pushed? Or does that mean you you pushed someone down like that once? With his mind-boggling tail and the way he say brutal, I wonder if he's Canadian. Yeah, he's Canadian. Brutal. Huh. Save your nasty look for the right person. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. Hey! Watch where you spill your coffee! Did you really just spill your coffee, man? The court record, huh? I mean... Oh... Uh, what does... On dusty bridge. Okay. Wait, if she was. She was shoved down. Onto her stomach. And then stabbed in the back. But there was no blood at the bridge? But. There's an ore. There's no dirt there. And we know that the scarf fell down and the scarf got dirty. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. I guess that doesn't prove that she got sh she didn't get sh shelved from behind. But this shows no dirt. There's no dirt. So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog too. It just was generally soggy atmosphere. Hair flick! Hair flick! Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is the photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Consi Considering the condition of the scene or the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us to as to what isn't right. What about this photo of this trunk that doesn't fit the contradictions that day? Conditions. Conditions, yes. Well, if she fell down, where's dirt on her? Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there is nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Remember the testimony? What was the condition on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusty bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of that bridge, then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. That that's actually that's exactly right. The other day, I fell on the muddy streets and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. Playoff beard. 
I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge was itself was muddy. Um. Your honor has fallen in the. Sh if your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, his glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet, not muddy. Why are you? Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove to this? To sir, That's he surface. proved that the surface of the bridge was not, was muddy that day. The surface of the bridge, huh? Ha! Huh. A real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Perfect. Of course I can. Here's the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. Take that. The evidence is this scarf. Ah! It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, that means the bridge was obviously covered in mud. <clears throat> oh! No! I can't be outwitted by a novice bimbo! You're a novice bimbo. Hey! Say to you, buddy! My Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the con condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is why there is a contradiction. Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at the explanation of this case. What in the case may be, shall we? All right. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha! You're doing pretty good for a little kitten. M Mr. Amato! No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, the witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim, or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. <laughs> what did you say just now? I'm not sure I like that. Th that wasn't me, your honor. It was the coffee aficionado over there that said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, your honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into the court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as flimsy scam it is. Y yes The false evidence in this case is the... Well, it's not the body in the trunk. Mm -hmm. It could be- it could be actually the witness testimony. The witness's photo. I mean, we have the photo. We have the photo. So, we can't say it's the photo. But although I can't, I can't say that I can't see the face of the, of the woman in this photo. Right. And I think I'm thinking back to last case where the everyone was, case. was a fucking everyone phony. Everyone was a phony. <laughs> well, I don't think they're gonna do this twice in a row. Yeah. So I'm gonna say the witness's testimony. Mm -hmm. It is a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal cr shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claimed to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witnesses the witness told us. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. Huh. <coughs> it's not just true, it's the truth. If there was a truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. 
Hmm. You should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Edwards said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? That the victim in the last case is already dead! <gasps> now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day on, with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Oh, I thought we were gonna. Witness, what is your name and occupation? Oh, son of a bitch! I knew it! No! Take your paper butterflies and go somewhere else! Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter! Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, I... how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double-double and dozen donut dolls. I feel like I want to hurry, hurry up and hand down my verdict just to have a bite. Oh my gosh, you're just as bad as the other judge. Hey, hey, not so fast. <sighs> as I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. Tell that to the first case. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Um. Fuck that. <laughs> why? Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Faye, you could learn a lot from this man. I'm not a man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Because they have standards. Standards that shouldn't really exist, but they do anyway because people are jackasses. Um, um sir? Yeah. Oh no, I actually don't remember the voice I gave her. Okay. This is my first time, so I'm not sure. I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble in my cause. Mmm, not at all. It's no trouble at all. Now then, maybe please have your name and occupation. My name is, um, Melissa Foster. What the F? I'm a college student, a, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when uh, the unfortunate event occurred, correct? So she was. She had to have been found out about her name, considering that she went on court. She went to court a year later as Dahlia Hawthorne and not Melissa Foster. Mm -hmm. Is that her fake name they used to fake her death? And you, and you are the one who took this photo. Is that accurate? <sighs> How can you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing? What are you doing shoving that in her face like that? What? Huh? But, but it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalize you. What? She's the one who took the photo. She should have been prepared for that question if she was caught here. This is bullshit. Uh oh. I don't like the turn this has taken. Is she staring at me? Um, and you would be... Huh? I I'm the defense lawyer. My name is Mia Fey. I see. So you are... Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, your honor. I I'll do my best. Okay, so in the next episode, we will take, um, Melissa's testimony. Melissa, quote unquote. Um, yeah, we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.